I serve here as an echo, i.e. it's all been said this morning already by David, and a, a warm-up act for the person who's going to say more about the same subject on your beloved Article 59 or the death thereof, Scott Redhead. So basically, I'm going to give you, you can lie back, it's not going to be technical, it is simply a guide to the changes in the, that are presented by the Melbourne Code. Oh, I knew that would happen. This is what happens when you prepare something on a Macintosh. There is a whole list of dictionary definition, which took up the bottom uh, part of the slide, uh, and it simply tells you that a code is legal, it is written, and it is evolutionary. The legal aspect is it's simply laws. Ah, oh, came through. Fungal names have been governed by a botanical code since 1867 in one form or another. Uh, it's, they are neither an afterthought or an uh, unloved step stepchildren, but are an integral part of the code and covered by it. Um, the code is changed during a Congress. However, Congresses are set six uh, years apart since uh, the recent past. And so to provide for evolution, the code is modified every six years by ratification of a plenary session, that's the full session, of an international botanical Congress on a resolution moved by its nomenclature sec section. Now the nomenclature sections have existed since Stockholm in 1950, and this is a picture of the nomenclature sex, uh, session, section in Melbourne. And you will note that there should be 201 bodies, of which 13 are mycological, and there is one lone mycologist hidden in that mass. And yet, uh, what, uh, OK, I'm going to back up just a minute. This group actually, oh, I was going to back up. There we go. Uh, effected quite a change because up until then we still have been known as the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. All right. The governance of the code is uh, varied, but there are three primary permanent committees. One is the editorial committee whose work is almost done, and that is simply it takes what we moved in Melbourne and it rends into it something that can be inserted into the code, the amendments are, are put in such a way that they are cohesive and will cover what was the intent that was conducted in the nomenclature section. Next are the permanent nomenclature committees, which are for vascular plants, bryophyta, fungi, algae, and fossil plants, and they busy, are busy throughout all six years. Uh, and there is the general committee, which as David already indicated, uh, hurries up a few months before the uh, Botanical Congress and, and uh, sort of does things. <laughs> okay. The nomenclatural and general committees deliberate over proposals from the scientific community. In other words, someone makes a proposal and essentially those committees adjudicate it in some way or other. To conserve or reject names and to revise the code and thereafter recommending the actions to the Congress. Now, I am secretary of the International Botanical Congress for the Nomenclatural Committee for Fungi. My word is never make a, pre a presentation on the Macintosh because this really was a better slide. Members of the Permanent Nomenclature Committee for Fungi are nominated by the nominating committee and in section, and they are approved by those delegates and the International Botanical Congress General Assembly. The secretary is appointed by the nominating committee. So I am already, or the secretary is already a member of the committee, but they select someone in there. I am in my second term. The chair is elected from the people who are members of the committee themselves, okay? Uh, I, I am focusing here on the mechanics because I think most of you are more acquainted with the workings of the ICTF than you are actually the NCF. How does it work? Is it really people who, choose their friends and they all have this sort of fusty uh, attitude on how uh, laws will be dictated. No, it's actually built in fairly well. The, the chair, uh, previous chair was Vincent de Molan on the left. The current chair is now Scott Redhead on the right. Traditionally, the secretary runs the committee, but we have a little fun in store for our current chair. He's going to be busy the next six years. 
Our current members are 18. It's a rather large committee. Uh, they uh, uh, represent uh, all very, very dis disciplines, and we try to get every uh, part of the world covered because you you have to come together. You have to uh, decide on the various uh, uh, things. What we primarily do and what keeps us busy for six years is we will look at proposals to conserve or reject fungal names. And basically somebody publishes a proposal, we sit around and wrangle, I send out commentaries, we, we uh, used to wait until there was some, going to be some resolution, but I have a nasty habit of sending out numerous ballots just to get people to pay attention to nomenclature. Now the reason we are on a nomenclature committee is that we are interested in nomenclature theoretically. I don't know about you, but it really takes some time to sit there for a day or two to rev up and try to get really interested in all the niceties and all of the history of, of names. And so what happens is the only way you get input for your common area is to send out a ballot. And then all of a sudden, people have questions. And so it seems to be the most efficient way of conducting business in the committee at the present time. Email is a, good, is a godsend. OK, I had forgotten. I had not shown this. This is the Vienna Code. It was the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. Now, I have here, <laughs> it's in league with Scott. At the very bottom, this is what I found on Wikipedia in 2007, after the code had been placed. And you will notice, on Wikipedia, they said, is the set of rules and recommendations dealing with the formal names given to plants. This did not make people happy. And there are quite a few in this room who began to immediately foment rebellion. We need our own code. And so this was discussed for quite, quite a while. It, by God, we, we want to have, uh, have a respect here, and we'll only have it if we have our own code, which to me was kind of going backwards. But who knows what this slide is going to. Yeah. OK. So, there was a bit of a rabble going on. People wanted to go to the mycological code. We kept saying, it really works well. We've got the mechanisms in place. Uh, the code is not the problem. The public perception of what the code is is the problem. So uh, Sir David came up with the, uh, uh, that's an in-joke, by the way, came up with the idea that if we actually made the presence of fungi more public, including changing the title, that perhaps people would be willing to continue to work within the confines of the botanical code. And so in 2007, I gave a similar presentation. And I thought, well, OK, we'll do this. We'll throw this out. And of course, the botanists will agree. And we'll have, have essentially the fungal code in Melbourne. None of us thought it was going to happen, but we thought it would be worth a time. What, in fact, did happen was we ended up with a nomenclatural code of nomenclature for algae, fungi, and plants. Blessedly, not the ICBMPN, which, because at the one point when it was obvious that they were going to accept this, this was on the first day of, of uh, Melbourne last year, um, the phycologist stood up and said, well, he wanted to have and phycological, so the, the name was going to be the International Code for uh, botanical, uh, alphabetical order, mycological, and phycological nomenclature. That's a mouthful. That's a lot of ologies. And so Vicky Funk, uh, who came up and said, why don't we change it? And so we all agreed that algae, fungi, and plants covers the whole watershed, and we could then further go the zoological code one better, and we're simply the ICN, or the International Code of Nomenclature, with the for algae, fungi, and plants understood. OK, I think we now know that Melbourne did change things. And in many respects, it is the fungal code. We changed as, as uh, the title. We got, are now uh, publishing electronically. The English diagnoses are now permitted. Uh, identifiers are going to be required beginning next year for the publication of fungal names. And of course, one fungus equals one name. OK, electronic publication used to be the only way you could publish a name had to be in hard copy. This year, as of the first of this year, names are validly published in either electronic published journals and books or hard copy print materials, with these caveats. 
They must be in a PDF format and published in journals and books within, with ISSN, ISBN numbers. So you can't just toss up your PDF on the web and, and say you've named a new thing. It, there are certain things to follow. Also, the dates are determined by the earliest dated final version. There's a bit of a fuss about this right now, whether electronic or paper. So you can actually date, you can, you can put it up, but it has to be a final version. And this, this comes into the problem with fast tracking. Um, English or Latin previously, you had to include, this is since 1935, you had to include a Latin di uh, description diagnosis. It was a safe way of saying that this, this was validly published in your name if it included that. Otherwise, it was not a valid publication. But now we can use either English or uh, Latin. This was highly supported, 61% support at, uh, in Edinburgh at the last my Mycological Congress. And so Vincent de Molin went ahead and proposed this, and it, was, it overwhelmed the Congress. Everybody went for it. We only were going to have it for fungi. Everybody now gets to use English, and they were quite relieved to be able to do so. Then we have the issue of registration uh, of new fungal names. This wasn't covered in the code previously. Uh, it had been tried, and particularly Werner Greuter had, had really wanted registration to, to occur. Uh, but it went down to sound defeat in St. Louis in 1999. Now we have it, and we will start uh, uh, beginning in January 2013. This will be required. You can do it now. And of course, in Microtax, and I'm editor in chief of that, we have been requiring it since I think it's 2005 or 6. Uh, the publication of new fungal names must include a citation of an identifier issued by a recognized repository in order for valid publication. This is another Hawksworth et al. proposal. Mechanisms to implement that are that the NCF, that's uh, our group, is to appoint one or more localized or decentralized open and accessible electronic repositories to perform this function. And at its discretion, if we see it's not working, we get to say, no, nope, we're going to end this, which gives us a unique amount of power. However, what they're not showing here is this is a test case. We are the cat's paw for the rest of the Congress. They've been trying to do this sort of thing for, for the botanists for quite some time, and they want to see, are we going to fall on our faces? And the Mobotters kind of think they, we might, but I think what they will be is pleasantly surprised. We are much farther along on uh, tying a number to a name than uh, they are in the other uh, disciplines that are governed by this particular code. At the moment, we are taking under advisement which repositories to appo uh, appoint. I'm not going to go into the details. Uh, some other people will. There is a bit of a problem brewing right now because uh, do you want a multiple thing? How are you going to have a central database? There's an awful lot of things going on that need to be considered. I'm briefly going to say we covered these. Don't have time to go into them now. You can see the names and your eyes will droop. Uh, you're covering sanction names, microsporidiums, and cultures. If you have questions about those and what we decided, ask me later, but they're covered in other places. And then finally, we come to the reason you're all sitting here, which is Article 59, one fungus equals one name. Before in Melbourne, we had alternate names permitted tied to pleomorphic, uh, some uh, pleomorphic fungi with uh, uh, asexual forms. Afterwards, we don't have alternate names. Uh, they're all legitimate fungal names are treated equally for the purpose of establishing priority, regardless of the life history uh, stage of the type. And that brings us right back to one fungus, which name? And it's my hope that uh, the chair of our committee will now give us some direction in that regard. Thanks. <laughs>